EUS guided gastroenterostomy to facilitate ERCP in a patient with duodenal switch anatomy. Our patient was a 70 year old female who presented with an indwelling percutaneous biliary drain, which was placed for biliary obstruction of unclear etiology. She initially presented to an outside hospital with elevated liver chemistries and right upper quadrant pain. She had a remote history of a duodenal switch performed approximately 15 years ago for the treatment of class three obesity. Prior distal bile duct biopsies had been obtained at an outside institution using digital single operator cholangioscopy, which was passed via the percutaneous access site. The biopsies demonstrated high grade dysplasia by report. We were unable to obtain the tissue from the outside facility for re-review at our institution. A CT scan was performed at the outside hospital, which suggested biliary ductal dilation and concern for an ampullary mass. The duodenal switch is a complex bariatric surgery which induces weight loss by combining a sleeve gastrectomy with an intestinal bypass. Following sleeve gastrectomy, the lower intestine is then divided further downstream than with a traditional gastric bypass. Thus, approximately two-thirds of the intestine are bypassed, leaving only a few feet of intestine where food and digestive enzymes meet. The name duodenal switch comes from the fact that in this operation, the intestinal bypass starts at the level of the duodenum. The duodenum is divided and subsequently attached to the ileum. The patient was referred for consultation in hepatobiliary surgery. An MRCP was performed, which demonstrated a possible short segment distal bile duct stricture, which was inadequately addressed due to the indwelling biliary drain. Given the patient's stable clinical course, complicated surgical anatomy, and the lack of malignant findings on histologic evaluation, surgery was not offered. Additional endoscopic evaluation and treatment was recommended. We first elected to proceed with cholangioscopy-directed biopsies of the distal bile duct using access through the percutaneous drain. We first elected to proceed with cholangioscopy-directed biopsies of the distal bile duct using access through the percutaneous drain. A long guide wire was passed through the indwelling percutaneous drain across the ampulla and deep into the small bowel and coiled several times. The indwelling biliary drain was exchanged for an occlusion balloon and a cholangiogram of the distal bile duct was obtained. The occlusion balloon catheter was exchanged for a digital single operator cholangioscope. This was passed over the wire and into the small bowel. The guide wire was removed and the cholangioscope was withdrawn to the level of the distal common bile duct. Biopsies were obtained under direct visualization. The cholangioscope was withdrawn and a new locking loop catheter was placed over the guide wire. Histologic review of the biopsy specimens demonstrated chronic inflammation but no evidence of malignancy. After a long discussion with the patient and other members of the care team, and given the ongoing concern for malignancy, it was determined that direct visualization of the ampulla was necessary. At that point, we elected to perform an EUS-guided gastroenterostomy using a 15 millimeter lumen opposing stent. This was subsequently followed by a transgastric ERCP with balloon extraction and biopsy of the distal bile duct. To aid in creation of the EUS-guided gastroenterostomy, we injected a combination of saline, methylene blue, and contrast using the indwelling percutaneous biliary drain. This allowed us to distend the small bowel and provide a target for EUS-guided access. A therapeutic channel linear array echo endoscope preloaded with alumin opposing stent and long guide wire were advanced to the mid body of the gastric sleeve where we were easily able to identify the dilated small bowel inferiorly. Using the electrocautery enhanced tip, the catheter was advanced through the gastric and small intestinal wall and the distal flange was deployed under endosonographic and fluoroscopic guidance within the small bowel. After deployment of the distal flange, we subsequently deployed the proximal flange under endoscopic visualization within the gastric sleeve. The preloaded guide wire was advanced into the small bowel and coiled. 
A seven French by seven centimeter double pigtail plastic stent was then placed through the lumen opposing metal stent. Two weeks later, the patient returned for transgastric ERCP. The seven French stent was removed in exchange for a therapeutic gastroscope. The gastroscope was advanced through the lumen opposing metal stent and the biliary drain was identified. The gastroscope was advanced retrograde towards the ampulla where it could be closely inspected. Biliary cannulation was achieved alongside the indwelling biliary catheter using an occlusion balloon catheter and a long guide wire. The indwelling percutaneous drain was removed through the skin site. A high quality cholangiogram using an 11 millimeter occlusion balloon was performed and demonstrated no significant pathology at the distal bile duct. We then obtained biopsies of the distal bile duct using large capacity forceps. The indwelling percutaneous biliary drain was not replaced. The gastroscope was withdrawn and the lumen opposing metal stent was subsequently removed. The final biopsy specimens demonstrated no evidence of malignancy. In conclusion, patients with duodenal switch anatomy who develop pancreaticobiliary disease create a unique diagnostic and therapeutic challenge. Conventional ERCP is impossible, while alternative options such as laparoscopic-assisted or balloon-assisted ERCP are technically challenging as well. EUS-guided gastroenterostomy permitted endoscopic evaluation of the ampulla and distal bile duct in a minimally invasive fashion. Therapeutic EUS can be a powerful tool in the management of patients with altered GI anatomy and pancreatic obiliary disease. EUS-guided gastroenterostomy followed by transgastric ERCP in duodenal switch anatomy was technically feasible and safe in our patient.